Hello and welcome to the latest anime news for the week ending May 30th, 2020. This week's news is back to the more usual content, which means starting with our new anime announcements um, and starting that with another isekai light novel and adaptation. Yes, that's right. Big shock there. Micro Magazine announced this week that Hirotsugu Ryosen's She Professed Herself People of the Wise Man novel series is inspiring a television anime. Here comes the story synopsis, so get out your isekai bingo cards now. The novel centers on Kagami Sakimori, a veteran player of a virtual reality MMO video game. His character is one of the game world's nine great sages and appears as an elderly wizard. When he gets an appearance changing item though, he begins to wonder what his character would look like as a cute girl instead. After falling asleep with the game suspended, he wakes up, of course, in the game world as his character, but his character is now in cute girl form. The novel began serializing on the Let's Become Novelists user-supported website back in 2012 and began its print publication in Micro Magazine in 2014. The series has more than one, uh, one million copies, one million copies in circulation with its 13th novel volume published just yesterday. The novel's also inspired a manga adaptation which began in 2016. So, yep, sounds like it's right down the Isekai um, alley way or Isekai world valley, whatever. So we've had our fantasy Isekai announcement for the week. Now onto the questionably more adult edition. The fifth compiled volume of Ikumi Hino's manga, Megami Ryo no Ryobokun, or Dorm Mother of the Goddess's Dorm, officially confirmed this week that an anime project is in the works. The series was teased back in April when the first pictures of the volume were revealed and the cover hinted at the new project. The manga's story centers on 12-year-old boy Koshi Nagumo. Koshi finds himself homeless and penniless, like it seems so many Japanese 12-year-old boys in anime, and is picked up from the streets to become the dorm mother at a dormitory full of troubled women's university students. That's not creepy at all. Surrounded by idiosyncratic and difficult older women, Koshi begins a slightly etchy new life, is how they describe it. Imagine that gender swapped. Actually, don't. The manga launched in Katakawa's Shonen H Ace magazine in December of 2017 and had its fourth compiled book published back in October. Our next announcement continues along classic anime tropes, this time that every organization has to have a cute mascot. A television anime series has been revealed for the Mifa organization's panda mascot character Mifanda. Hmm, wonder where they come up with that name. That's a stretch. MIFA, which stands for Music Interact Football for All, aims to bring together soccer and music to promote communication. Sure. The new TV anime titled MIFANDA the Singing Soccer Panda, I'm not making that up, will premiere in July and will feature MIFANDA and two of his apparently many, many teammates. Uh, next up, it was also announced this week that Soro Soro Tanagawa's manga Taiko's Everyday Life is inspiring a new TV anime series. Um, the series will premiere on Tokyo MX on July 1st with new one-minute episodes airing each day Monday through Friday at 5.59 p.m. So this is going to be a really short one. The story centers on office worker Taiko Shinbo, who is always patient and greets anything that comes her way cheerfully. Aww. The manga previously inspired a 26-episode TV anime, which aired in October of last year, in case you were wondering, doesn't that sound familiar? The cast from the first anime will be reprising their roles, including Taiko, who is played by an actual company employee from the outskirts of Tokyo named Tanaka. That's pretty cool. The manga debuted on Twitter in 2015 and began an official publication in City Living Magazine in 2016, with its third compiled book volume released in March of this year. So, relatively recent work, um, and uh, coming again to anime in very, very short snippets. Last up for this week's new anime, <clears throat> excuse me, an anime adapted from a game adapted from an anime, because why not? The Yuki Yuna is a hero, a sparkling bouquet smartphone game celebrated its third anniversary this week with a live stream where it announced that the game is inspiring its own short anime featuring an original story. The story also features the transforming girls of Sanshu Junior High's Hero Club, 
where the club president announces the development of the long-awaited Hero Club Udon. It sounds like it might be a little less serious than the original anime, just guessing. The new anime is also the fifth part of the celebration of the original anime's fifth anniversary. The original Yuki Yuna is a Hero TV anime aired in October of 2014. The smartphone game launched in June of 2017 and launched on PC in October of 2017, which is also when the anime's second season premiered. The anime also inspired a manga adaptation, as all decent anime do, which ran from 2014 to 2018. Man, things move that quickly. You gotta do things, uh, fifth anniversary uh, releases. Fittingly, the week that brings that announcement of an anime adapted from a game also brings several announcements of new games based on anime. Several anime properties announced this week that they have video game adaptations in the works, and you see some of them here. First up, a little series you might have heard of called ReZero. Spike Chunsoft announced yesterday, is that just me having that a weird name, Spike Chunsoft? Uh, they announced yesterday it's developing a new game based on the ReZero Starting Life in Another World franchise, which is set to debut on PlayStation 4, PC, and Nintendo Switch sometime this winter. The game, subtitled The False Royal Election Candidate, is based on the Royal Selection storyline from the anime's first season, but will tell an entirely new what-if series of events with plot supervision by the series' original author, Tape Nagatsuki. Tape Nagatsuki. There we go. Next up, a whole set of video games based on an anime based on video games. Everyone's still keeping up with all this. Um, a live stream special celebrating Dragon Quest Day has announced not one, but three upcoming video games from the Dragon Quest The Adventure of Dai franchise. That's D-A-I, not D-I-E. DNA, that's D-E-N-A, is developing a smartphone role-playing game where up to three people can participate cooperatively. The developers plan to release further information in the fall with a game to launch for iOS and Android sometime in 2021. And that's a pretty vague date, but hey, video game developer. Um, an arcade game is also in development, which is pretty cool. How often do we get to hear about brand new arcade games being developed? That game is coming soon, slated to debut sometime in or after this fall. So basically, in a while. Thirdly, Square Enix itself is developing the new Infinity Strash Dragon Quest The Adventure of Dai game for game con consoles, which will also release sometime in 2021. So, Dragon Quest fans rejoice. Two more anime-based mobile games were also announced this week. The Saga of Tanya the Evil is inspiring a smartphone game titled Saga of Tanya the Evil, Thus the Mages Did Clash, which sounds like a really weird Christmas song. The game will be based on the anime story, but will also feature new events from the perspective of different characters. So that's something to look forward to for those fans. Last up, the quintessential quintuplets is also getting its first smartphone game, set to be released sometime this year. The 500% Cuteness Quintuplet Love Comedy Puzzle Game, that's what they're calling it, is being developed by Enish, and will feature an original story with the anime's five main voice actors reprising their roles. I gotta admit, I guess it's the only way to do that. Uh, now, those of you who've been saying we should have copyrighted the online con idea when we had the chance might just have been onto something. This, uh, this week, both Aniplex and Anime Expo announced that they will be uh, hosting online events across the 4th of July weekend. Funimation is also holding its virtual Funimation Con 2020 that weekend, so anime fans will certainly not lack things to watch as if they didn't already. Aren't we all already catching up on all of our anime now? The Aniplex Online Fest will be held on July 4th and 5th, and why can't they just call it festival? And will be free to attend on YouTube. The event's official website describes it as follows, and I quote, The festival will feature a diverse array of online content, including talk shows with the staff and cast from popular anime, special appearances, and past live shows from music artists, hmm, and behind-the-scenes stories from the anime industry, end quote. The event will be hosted by bilingual idol Sally Amaki, a member of the Japanese idol group 227. Musical acts who have been confirmed so far include 22.7, Lisa, Mashiro Ayano, and several other groups, so there is sure to be something for any anime music 
man. Uh, Anime Expo also announced its online event this week with Anime Expo Lite to be live streamed on July 3rd and 4th. The event will feature artist and character designer Yoshitaka Amano of Vampire Hunter D and the Final Fantasy game franchise, as well as other guests, industry panels, exclusive content from Japan, and giveaways. Pretty much all the things you would expect. The event will also feature content from companies such as Bushiroad, Crunchyroll, Pony Canyon, and Viz Media. So they got some fairly heavy hitters on the docket there. Uh, now, Anime Expo is originally going to host the world premiere of Amano's Gibi 8 or Gibi 8 anime series and include a panel about the anime as well as a mini concert of the music. Um, who knows the exact details of that, however. With many of the summer's new anime series being cancelled, what better time than the present to start catching up on the classics? Digital Media Rights has partnered with Tezuka Productions to release nine, nine, nine uh, uh, anime titles on its Retro Crush service starting on June 5th, so just in a few days. These titles include the 1980 remake of Astro Boy, as well as the series, films, and OVAs from the 90s and 2000s. The first two titles, Blackjack and A Time Slip of 10,000 Years, Prime Rose, were released on June 5th, with the rest premiering afterwards from June through August. Um, I mean, Astro Boy is definitely a classic, so that would be probably worth, uh, worth checking out. Last up this week, much of our business and personal lives have been moving over to Zoom, so why not our favorite anime and manga stories as well? Seimaru, Amag- uh, I'm sorry, Seimaru Amagi, co-creator of Kindaichi Case Files, and the stars of the anime adaptation have taken it upon themselves to provide some new content uh, amongst all the reruns and rewatches. A manga, uh, uh, Amagi has created the new The Kindaichi Case Files, The Stay Home Murder Mystery as a two-part Zoom drama featuring the series actors and voice actors telling an all-new two-part story. Stars Hajime Kindaichi and friend Miyuki will be pictured during, during the presentation with limited animation manga art while the other guest characters will appear in person on screen. Detective Kindaichi will be working from a distance to solve the murder of an old woman. Each suspect will appear in the call during the first broadcast to try to defend themselves, and Kindaichi will use his deductive skills to determine the murderer in the second. Clever fans might even have the chance to, to join a Zoom call with the stars during the broadcast second half. Uh, a quiz will allow viewers to choose who they think the culprit really is. Ten lucky viewers will be chosen from the pool of correct answers, and will get to participate in a call with the actors after the special has aired. The first half of the Stay Home Mystery will air for free on YouTube on May 31st, uh, which is later on today in Japan as I'm recording this. The second half will stream on the Twit Casting website on June 6th and will cost 500 yen to view. Aha. Uh -huh. Still, clever idea, cool idea, be interesting to see how that goes. That's the news for this week. Thanks for watching.